uh, it's like uh, Sri Lanka is in a very crucial stage because what happens in Sri Lanka resonates outside. And this will be seen as an example because Sri Lanka is going to be the first post-COVID debt restructuring. And also we're in the midst of an upcoming uh, recession. I mean, it's also a time of uh, quantitative easing globally, uh, the US monetary policy tightening, so making it tougher for borrowing and the Ukraine-Russia war. I mean, this has affected oil prices and uh, food shortages because around 30% of uh, the wheat uh, globally comes from there. So since most of the developing countries uh, are importers of food and uh, fuel, this uh, means a number of countries going into debt. So it's not just about Sri Lanka seeking um, uh, debt relief, but there's also competition for Sri Lanka. So this kind of makes it a bit more complex. And uh, lately what we find is that uh, the number of uh, distinct creditors has also increased drastically. Like in the last decade, it's reached over 20, making the process extremely uh, complex. And uh, so we have uh, four major uh, types of creditors, or you can say three. Uh, one is the bondholders, the, the private sector, institutional investors and others. Uh, the others are the multilaterals who usually, as uh, Dr. Phuket said, uh, we do not usually uh, restructure their debt because they are usually given at times when countries are in tough situations and their interest rates are very low and grace periods are quite long. So there it's mostly refinance. And uh, the other thing is the bilateral uh, uh, debt. One is the Paris Club. Uh, here in Sri Lanka, the largest uh, creditor is Japan out of the Paris Club and out of the non-Paris Club, it's uh, China. So, so as uh, the professor was saying, there is a common framework, so which includes the Paris uh, Club members and the non-Paris Club members. But unfortunately, Sri Lanka does not fall into it because it's usually for the uh, low-income uh, category, which Sri Lanka doesn't fall into. And uh, also... The majority of Sri Lanka's creditors are the private uh, sector ones. But uh, there is a bit of a complication because the Chinese uh, state-owned enterprises also come in as private enterprises. So that is uh, hugely debatable. Uh, but uh, as far as what Sri Lanka can do, one is uh, be transparent, not only to the population, but to the creditors, so that each creditor uh, knows what the other one is getting, not just within uh, bilateral to countries, but also to the private uh, creators as well. So that will be one thing. The other thing is uh, not to uh, demonize uh, the international creditors. I mean, this is this is a, a time when uh, certain uh, factions can take advantage. Uh, so so it it just like uh, criticizing, demonizing uh, international creditors. We just makes the whole process much more tougher. So so there's a bit of a uh, collective action needed, and also building confidence by emphasizing on sustainable development, like uh, improving education, like uh, mostly like not just uh, improving, but also refocusing our education more towards STEM and other industries where we can, like um, uh, what was discussed uh, more towards digitalization and also the climate aspect of it. Because uh, not just uh, Europe currently leads when it comes to green bonds, but not just Europe, but even uh, large uh, companies like uh, Google and all have issued uh, green bonds. So this is another area where we can focus because we are uh, well, um, what can you say? We have excess amount of solar wind in this country. Uh, so. Uh, the other thing is also making use of our strategic location. I mean, uh, we are next to uh, a very lies, a rising global power, India. So making use of it. And as far as asset sales go, like Professor Ulrich said, uh, we not just for uh, the money that's needed urgently, but also for strategic reasons. Like, for example, how, if privatizing, probably like um, uh, giving it to a investor from India or China, if it can open the state-owned enterprises to more investments or more clients, customers, these can be uh, quite helpful. And uh, in some cases, uh, you know, debt reprofiling also can be an option. But uh, this is going to be a very tough uh, period because a number of reforms are going to be needed, like tax increases. What we find is that uh, in the mid-1990s in Sri Lanka, our tax-to-GDP ratio was 20%. Now it's come down to 8%. And uh, if you can just get it back there, our whole budget deficit can be erased. Uh, so 
not just increasing taxes, but increasing the tax base. So that is one thing, reducing uh, subsidies. These are not easy decisions, but uh, as uh, uh, Dr. Shanta Devarajavan said, instead of subsidies, can try to transfer the cash more to the poor mm -hmm. and uh, restructuring the SOE. So it's a very positive move uh, about privatizing Sri Lankan airlines. Uh, but at the same time, we also need to uh, take uh, uh, the, the interests of ordinary citizens at the moment. I mean, there's a huge amount of belt tightening going on. So how much more they can take is also the question. So there has to be a sort of a balance between uh, uh, being fair to the creditors and also looking after the interests of the population. So uh, one thing is, uh, so the IMF would be a good partner here needed. So just, uh, just the government showing willingness to engage in an IMF program and starting the process itself brings in a lot of uh, confidence and credibility to the whole restructuring process. And uh, lastly, leaving on a uh, positive note, just to build up confidence to face this, uh, as um, was mentioned, Japan has the highest debt, but it has a number of other reasons. Also, most of its debt is in local currency. So, uh, but also, Sri Lanka, we, we must know that uh, we can come out of this because this is the first time we've defaulted. And Argentina has defaulted nine times and three times in this century alone. So, so many countries have gone through this. So it's all about like using this crisis to get the proper, proper reforms. And if you can come out of this much stronger, that would be very helpful and useful. And when looking back, this crisis could be seen as a more of a positive. Uh, if we move, uh, if we can get the correct... Uh, reforms done and become uh, a developed country in the coming decades. Thank you.